Hi, I'm Sean Clark. Today I'm standing in front of the warehouse from the film The Fly. Welcome to Horse Hall Grounds. This is when we first see this room. And the party is happening below. That giant wooden spiral staircase was not here. This is a addition that came in after. But this is where Gina Davis meets Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, you should really come check out my stuff. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. So this is where they meet, they're closing this area right now, so unfortunately I can't get it as good as I want it. But this is where the party was. And they are right around here. The stairs that went around this room have been removed. This big spiral staircase here, this has been added. It's completely changed, but you can recognize all these archways. And this is still the room. But I just got asked to leave because they're closing it off, as you can see. Here we are at the Monolith Publishing Building. This is Staffus Building from The Fly. And right up there, one of those corner offices we're led to believe is where Stathis' office is, but it's actually another location. We're gonna go there now. But holy crap, there it is. Yeah, obviously these were, it was a much bigger office because it it went wider, um, but yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Well, yeah, because we've renovated many times since, but obviously you're going to keep the column, right? I'm sorry? And we would have kept the column. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's because it's holding the building up, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> holding the ceiling up. That's amazing. Uh, crazy. Stathis's office. See, that's funny. Now I'm going to tell everybody. Did you know that this was yeah. fly this down here? Yeah. And if you look out, you can definitely see everything out there. Mm. That is so cool. Because I'm not expensive. And uh, they know they'll end up owning it all, whatever it is. So. so in the movie The Fly, Jeff Goldblum takes Gina Davis to a burger place, because he says, Cheeseburger. The magic words. And the place he takes them to is a John Anderson charbroiled hamburgers. John Anderson was a famous Maple Leafs hockey player, and that was a chain. There aren't too many left now. The one that was in the fly has unfortunately been torn down. The building's been torn down, so that location no longer exists. But there just happened to be one here, and I was like, you know, this is the place it was. It was, it was, like, it was like saying... They were at McDonald's, but it wasn't this McDonald's, it was that McDonald's, but this is what a McDonald's looks like. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, it's not really the location, but I'm just adding this because.
right here. This will be the shot. A lot has changed on this street, but you can still match everything up. You can see the brick there matches. They're walking up the street in the marketplace. I believe it then cuts to one of these little markets, like could have been somewhere over here, like one of these little gazebos where he buys her the trinkets. It's probably one of these places down here that were that are shut right now. But anyway, this is it. So right here, this used to be John's Italian Coffee. Uh, that was the coffee shop from the fly. Let's go take a look inside. Hmm. So the coffee shop is now upstairs apparently. But, but this was it. This is where the coffee shop was from the fly. And if you look, the windows are kind of the same as far as the green blocks, but it has definitely changed. A lot of people believe that the Cheapies record location that Jeff Goldblum passes was the famous one on King Street. It is not. It has been torn down. This is the building today. It was actually the location on Young Street, formerly owned by Willie Sportello. This was confirmed by Cheapies Records' King Street owner, Brian Jason. So here we are. This is the Royal Oak Inn, formerly Stoopy's Tavern. Unfortunately, it is no longer Stoopy's Tavern. It was changed in 2013. These windows can be seen in the tavern but now they're converted into little rooms. They're like, uh, you might be able to see, I was just in one, uh, I had to crudely get shots, but you can see they're just changing this all to, into little tiny hotel rooms. So, unfortunately, <laughs> bless you. Many cool films shot here. Cronenberg used this location twice on the fly, of course, which is why we're here today, and on History of Violence. This was also seen in the film Cocktail with Tom Cruise, as well as one of my favorite films, the underrated gem, The Ref with Dennis Leary. This is where Murray is getting drunk at the bar when Gussie's calling him. And he's chewing him out for uh, not being there to pick him up. But he got scared because of the cops. And now that entrance isn't even used anymore. They've made the entrance around the corner. Such a shame. So this guy showed me around a little bit. Right here where that little desk area is with the window. That's where the actual bar was. And to the left right behind this wall here, where I'm looking at this historical photo of the building, right behind that wall is the area where Jeff Goldblum walked in. That would have been where the tables were, where he did the arm wrestling stuff. We're gonna go back there in a second. Here we are, now we're back there behind that area, and they've made these tiny little hotel rooms. So bizarre. See, this is that area right there, basically, is where those rooms are. And where that bar was is where his little office window was. It's so weird that they turned this classic bar into these tiny little rooms. See that window? That window is the one you can see behind Jeff Goldblum right there. It's that window. These are tiny little rooms. And I believe that door right there leads to the outside where Jeff Goldblum exits. Are you a bodybuilder or something? Yeah, I build bodies. I take them apart and I put them back together again. And this is where Jeff Goldblum is walking with the girl he meets at the bar. Well, you sure took Marky apart. Let's go back to my place. Looking around sketchily, although Scott isn't doing that. 
It's a little too early to quit. Sure, a few more bars. This is where they drive into the hospital. They come in here, like so. Here. This is pillars. Into right here. Well, okay. What's the story? And right here, we're outside of the exterior of the abortion clinic from the fly. This is just before it takes her away. So this was the building used as the top of the abortion clinic in the fly. Well, we assume it's the top of the abortion clinic. Maybe he just takes her to another rooftop. But anyway, somewhere up here, the exact spot, it's hard to tell unless you're up there. And we're not getting up there. Uh, but I, something tells me it might be up there, looking down, like right up in this area. I think probably around where that pole is. I believe that would be the area. And you can see from up there a house across the street, and it's this one right here. But you can see those garage doors. But unfortunately, not getting up there. But it's a damn cool looking school, isn't it? I don't know, just turn left, we're almost there. This has changed quite a bit. And the entrance to the warehouse was actually right here. There used to be a big dock that went this whole way. And you can see where it used to be. It actually was up high, like right at the, the top of this little kind of crevice here. That's where the platform was and they, they've extended all these big windows. There used to be a platform you could walk up. Mm -hmm. You can see this in the film actually, they pass by this right here. But this has really been cleaned up and gentrified. The building and used to go all the way down to the end. It of did. It used to go yeah. all the way down. Funny thing, if you're a fan of the movie Boondock Saints, on the other side of this building is Rocco's apartment from the film. And. And you have another tidbit, didn't you? Because, excuse me if I'm, if I'm incorrect here, but I believe that this continued all the way down. It certainly did, Sean. And like you said, there yeah. was a low dock all the way down this side. Mm -hmm. In a certain movie starring Elizabeth Shue from 1987, Adventures in Babysitting, this was Thor's garage. Whose and garage? Thor. Thor. Mm. Uh, so where they get that, where they escape from the, uh, no, Thor's not Thor's garage, where they escape from uh, the bad guys. Oh. And they climb up through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So I did those locations on my channel. And you see those windows still in the background. But yes, there was a whole thing here. Adventures in Babysitting. Scott on tape. Check oh. it out. Yeah, check. You got your video on your channel, right? Beats to the rhymes and name of this gem. D, that's me and that's who I am. Rocking on the mic because I know I can. I was just going to say that it's no, it was the chop shop in Adventures in Babysitting. And when you read and articles. That was right here, right? Yeah, it was right here because they did film inside. And it mentions in a lot of articles you read about Adventures in Babysitting, which is a great movie, quite different than The Fly. They mentioned The Fly. Oh, that's cool. Because that's, when I came down here, I knew about this. I mean, The Fly. I did not know about Boondock Saints, so that's very cool. Yeah, that's right on the other side of this. It's yeah. like attached to this building pretty much. It's a yeah. whole different look here. That's a, that's a new building. That's a new building. That's a new extension there. Mm -hmm all different. If I remember correctly, I think, didn't this building, this building kind of curved? Off, all, it, it curved. Yes. 
Yeah, but it came down much further. Yeah, but it but it didn't go straight. It curved right. away. Because so in, in Invention Babysitting, they go psh, Yeah. Around this so way. I believe there, when when it picked up right here, I believe there was part of an alley here. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff, but. This building is still the same, obviously. Yeah, I mean. I don't know if it's even the fly. But. It, well, it's changed on top. There was some stuff on top they took down, but for the most part, yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if this was actually the interior where they shot the fly, but unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, it was at, uh, what was the name, Cinespace? Cinespace, down, uh, downtown Toronto, down on, off of Eastern, which you can go take a look at, and we will go take a look yeah, at Yeah, I'll take a quick peek yeah. at it. We can't really get inside, but we can look at it from we over We could, the if we rented a soundstage. Yeah, I, I ain't doing that. Okay. So, we'll just look at it from through the fence, or over the fence, or under the fence. But Cinespace Studios, this is actually where they shot all the interiors on David Cronenberg's The Fly. Looks like this building's been renovated, but this was it. Inside these walls was the interiors from The Fly. Pretty cool. This is it, kids. This is the me. This is it. But this is the fly. This is the fly. Jeff Gold. Jeff. Oh, oh, Je Jeff Goldblum. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh. I remember. I remember. Ooh, ah, ah. Oh, ah I remember doing yeah. that. Ooh, ah, yeah. yes, the fly. Yes. Oh, yeah. With, with the beautiful Gina Davis. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, ah. Yeah, Gina Davison, smoking hot. They first met on what film, Scott? Cutthroat Island. Wrong. Okay. Transylvania 6 5000. Transylvania 6 5000. Yep. That's Number. right. Oh, and then they worked together again on The Woman in Red. Wrong. Okay. Earth Girls are easy. <laughs> they are. But anyway. From so, my experience. Anyway, other than showing that Scott has zero knowledge of film, uh, this was the location. <laughs> I'm kind of known. <laughs> okay, so you don't know much about Gina Davis and Jeff yeah. Goldblum. Well, I know she did Cuthbert Island. Cuthbert Island. Cuthbert Island. She did a great movie here, another great movie here in Toronto, Long... Kiss Goodnight. Yeah, that was yeah. on your I've Jackson. actually seen some of those locations. Yeah, that's up at Bath Bathurst and Bloor. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's that's move on. Yeah. Actually, let's not move on. Let's end it here. We're going to end it here? Yeah, well, we start here, but then we'll, this is the climax. This is the warehouse. Let's end it here. A man can beg, a man can crawl. In the sheer face of love, like a fly on the wall. Wow, okay. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on another fly adventure. That's right. Ooh, ah, uh, <laughs> ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. Ah, ooh. Uh, yes, yes. Mm, <laughs> mm. That's all right. That's... Uh, yeah, Scott on Tape here. Make sure to check out his channel, Scott on Tape on YouTube. Yeah, Scott and the Instagram. Tape on Instagram, YouTube. Scott the Tape on Instagram? I think I'm changing it. Scott on Tape. Actually, I should make sure Scott on Tape. That's, hey, Class of 1984, that's a good movie. You should do locations. I should do that one. I, ooh, uh, yeah. mm, ooh that's idea. a great idea. Oh, <laughs> mm. See you next time. Peace. Ow. Oh, I thought I was doing my ending. Oh, oh, no, I, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was, I was doing it. I was, letting you, I was doing like the Adam the Woo thing with you. I was going to let you do your ending. You, know, with, you joined do, us. Hey, do your, do, you? wait, wait, no, no, no. do your ending, shall you? All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Love you all. Peace. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> That's All fun. Right. That's fun. Yeah.